Today's video is all about push sticks. Now, I know you may think not the most exciting topic in the world, but of course, push sticks are essential to shop safety. Now, there are so many options available out there. My goal today isn't to do a full review of them, but what I do want to do instead is share some of my favorite options, including commercially available options and some homemade options too. I'll also show you how easy it is to make some of these using templates and share some of my favorite templates with you. Be sure to check the link in the description down below for the plans. Let's start with the most basic of push sticks, and that's the stick that comes with almost every single table saw. It looks like a stick with a V-notch in the end. Now, this is probably my least favorite push stick because it offers very little control over the board. All you have is this little V-notch here that really doesn't do much. Ideally, a push stick will help with three things. It'll help you apply forward motion as you're pushing through, apply downward force to hold the piece against the table in case of tendency to kick back, and apply force against the fence so your board won't twist and potentially catch and cause kickback. Even though it's not my favorite, I always do leave it here on my table saw's fence, and that's just so I have something in case I have nothing else and I didn't plan my cut, I'll always have this here as a safety device that I can use to push the board through. Personally, not my favorite. One of my favorite store-bought push sticks or push blocks in this case is the Gripper by Microjig. And the reason that I really like it is that it allows you to apply the three types of forces all at once against the fence, down and through all at once, which gives you great control over your workpiece. Personally, I found that it's really the best for ripping thin strips, anything under a few inches really. It has this rubber along the bottom to better grip the wood as you push forward, but it can sometimes lose its grip when it gets covered with sawdust. So every once in a while, I like to wipe it down with a damp towel or rubbing alcohol to restore that grip. Now you can adjust the center leg depending on the width of the cut and the same for the support leg to match the thickness of the wood and provide added stability. The leg can be swapped out for a really thin one, one eighth of an inch to cut super thin pieces. And if you do ever cut through the leg, it's fully plastic, so no issue there. And you can replace just that part without replacing the whole push block. Now, that being said, this is probably one of the more expensive commercially available options, but still, personally, I think it's totally worth the investment and I highly recommend it. And I'll leave a link to all the products I talk about down in the description below. Another type of push block that I really like are these Milescraft grabbers. I use these when cutting wider stock on the table saw, especially sheet goods. They provide added control and really good grip. The bottoms are covered with rugged rubber grip, kind of like having winter tires on your push block. These never lose their grip. These are also what I use most of the time on the joiner. Again, they provide amazing grip while keeping my hands far away from spinning blades or knives. I also frequently use them on the router table, again, providing great grip and control while keeping my hands safe away from the bit. And by the way, none of the tools I use in the video today are sponsored in any way. These are all just my personal preference and tools that I like to use. And if you're interested, I'll leave links to each of the tools I talk about in this video down in the description below. Now, another similar alternative like the grabbers that I've just added to my collection is called the Grip Lock by Microjig. It's very similar in the sense that it has this grip underneath, although I can't say that the grip on this one is quite as good as the grabbers. But on the other hand, it does have this added benefit of these smart hooks that pop down to hook onto the end of the board, which makes them ideal for using on the joiner. Now you can lock the hooks in the upright position if you don't need them and just use it as a regular push pad or leave them unlocked. That way they drop down if you need them or retract when you don't. Now I'll be honest since I haven't used this that much yet, honestly, but I do like the concept in theory of these hooks that pop down. So I plan to use it a lot more on my joiner in the future. Now one of the newer push sticks on the market is called the Hedgehog Push Block. At first sight, it may seem similar to a lot of commercially available push sticks, but it has a few key features that makes it worth looking into. First, it has a slim profile that allows you to easily rip thin strips as thin as half an inch. It also has this neoprene grip underneath for added control and an offset handle to keep your hand farther away from the blade, which I really like. And it's very affordable, so it won't break the bank. Now, if you just want to buy one push stick and be done with it, I definitely recommend looking into this one. So that just about wraps up the store-bought options, which are really nice because you can just buy them and use them right out of the package, no effort required. The downside is obviously the cost combined with the fact that push sticks get chewed up and eventually get tossed when they're too damaged. 
In my opinion, push sticks are made to get chewed up and you shouldn't be afraid to damage them when pushing them through the saw. That's why I like to use homemade push sticks that are cheap and easy to make. Now I've seen some really beautiful fancy push sticks out there. Some are really amazing, but for me personally, I just want something that's cheap, easy to make, and that I won't be afraid to damage when sawing through it. All right, first up, probably one of the most popular push stick designs out there, at least from the homemade type, is one that looks sort of like this. You may have seen a video from John Heise where he shows how to make one. Now, personally, for me, I'm not a big fan of this design because your hand is kind of in an awkward vertical position. It's behind the workpiece. And really, to me, it feels like there's a lack of control there. When I use it, my hand tends to kind of wobble because I don't feel like I'm in control. So the hand positioning really isn't comfortable, at least not for me. So there's a slightly modified version of this one, and it looks something like this. Very similar, except the handle's at more of a 45 degree. I like this version a little better. The handle is at an angle, putting your hand more over the workpiece than behind it. Your hand is more at a 45 degree than vertical, which makes me feel more in control. It's easier to apply downward pressure. So as far as I'm concerned, this design is a lot better than this one. At least as far as I'm concerned, it's all about personal preference really, but I like the angle that gives me more control over my workpiece. Now I've only taken one shop class in my entire life, and that was kind of an intro to tools and tool safety class. And in that class, we designed a push stick. Well, didn't design it. They <laughs> made us use a template and cut out a push stick. And it looked something like this. Kind of like, I think it's supposed to be a rabbit, <laughs> although I'm not totally sure. I really like this one because of the position of the handle. Your hand is really over top, over the workpiece, and more in a horizontal position than vertical. And I feel like it really gives you control over the workpiece. That being said, I still feel like this one's kind of wobbly. I don't feel totally in control, and that's why I want to show you another design. I stumbled across another design by William Ng, and it's similar in design in the sense that your hand is in the horizontal position above the workpiece, which really gives you control and allows you to push down on the workpiece as you're pushing through. I really like this design because it's simple and easy to make, and I'll leave a link to his video in the description below as well. Now really, when it all comes down to it, all of these designs are good. I'm not here to tell you which one's better than which. When it all comes down to it, it's just a matter of personal preference and finding which one you're more comfortable with. And as you can see, I actually have a bunch of different ones, different designs that I use for different types of cuts depending on the situation. And I think that's probably ideal to have a bunch of different ones on hand. First off, you'll wanna make them out of plywood. Solid wood can break across the grain depending on the grain direction, and plywood is just safer. You can just print out the template and use some light spray on adhesive to stick it to the plywood. I'm using 3 quarter inch plywood here, but it's good to have some thicker ones for more stability and also some thinner ones for cutting thin strips. It's easiest to cut them out using the bandsaw, but you could also use a jigsaw. I like to use the fence to make sure the bottom part is perfectly straight. I'm also still trying to master cutting curves on the bandsaw, so I prefer to stay outside the lines and roughly cut out the shape first. I can then use a sander to refine and smooth out the shape. Now if you want, you can also use a round over bit to take off the sharpness off the edges and make the push stick more comfortable to handle. This is totally optional though. Again, my motto when it comes to push sticks is to keep it pretty basic and not spend too much time making them. Once again, I have templates available for all four of these designs. Be sure to check the link in the description below. Now there's one final design that I want to show you, and this one's more of a push block than a push stick, and it's meant to be sort of similar to the gripper here. Now because you can rip through these and these are more expensive, I wanted a homemade version of this that provides the same level of control and stability, so this is something I came up with. Now I've seen Steve Ramsey make something very similar, and I've seen other designs, but they all had screws in them, which makes me kind of nervous, so I'm attempting to make this one without any metal parts or pieces or screws or anything like that. Let me show you how I made this. You'll need basic materials for this. A piece of two x four, a small block for the handle, a little piece of quarter inch plywood, and some 3 8 dowel. I cut the two x four to roughly eight inches, and then I'll attach the heel using some glue and secure that with a clamp. So I can then drill a couple holes using a 3 8 drill bit and reinforce it with dowel. I'll just apply glue and push in the dowel. 
Then use a flush trim saw to trim the dowel back. With that done, I'll repeat the same process for the handle. First a little glue, then clamp it so I can insert the dowels. I want to go about halfway through the bottom block, so I'll use a little blue tape to mark the depth of my bit. Then a little glue in the hole and on the dowel, push it all the way down, and trim off the excess. Once dry, I'll do a little sanding to clean it up, and there you have it, your DIY push block without any metal fasteners. To use it, just like any other cut I make, I'll set the blade height just above the board. Then push the workpiece and the push block up against the fence and push through the cut. At first, I'll admit I felt a little nervous using this type of push block. Like my hand was going to get cut or something. Maybe it was because I couldn't see the blade making the cut. I'm not really sure, but after a few cuts using this push block, it really started to grow on me. As long as the blade is set to the right height, your fingers are far away from the blade, and plus you've got really good control over your workpiece. Of course the downside is that the push block will get chewed up pretty quickly and need to be replaced. So it might not be worth all the effort to you. Bottom line though, this is a good cheap alternative to the gripper. Of course, this one will become disposable while this one should last a long time. Once again, it all comes down to personal preference, but both are options I'd consider. All right, so that's a wrap on this push sticks video. I'd love to hear your feedback, love to hear what are some of your favorites, or if there are any designs that I missed that you guys use, that you guys love, let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you soon. Ooh, grip it. Grip it good. Mm -hmm. Nah, 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 nah.